My name's Greer Berry and I am a journalist and I write a wedding blog called Ready or Not and I'm also a marriage celebrant. Ready or Not's been going for about two years. While it was running on stuff.co.nz it was one of the most read blogs and now it's just gone over to uh, my personal blog on greerberry.co.nz. My husband-to-be was posted to Afghanistan, so I had lots of time on my hands and I thought what better way to do it than to plan a wedding. So I documented that for a year. Since then it's just been focusing more on other people's issues and, um, and concerns about their wedding days. Money is definitely a big one, um, budget and um, stress involved with money and how to talk to people about money. Other things are kind of the etiquette of it, so how do you tell someone you don't want them to be your bridesmaid anymore when you've already asked them. You know, is it traditional that the bride's parents still pay and quite taboo subjects um, that people don't generally like um, talking about that much so they kind of find the anonymity of the internet the perfect place to ask those questions. I think the first piece of advice for when you're starting out uh, planning a wedding is having a really honest discussion about how you envisage your day. Uh, one of the things I found with my blog commenters was that a lot of them have dreamed about this their whole lives and have quite grand plans and I think they're almost embarrassed to have them, especially when money's tight. And I'm not saying that a bride should get everything that she wants but an understanding and an appreciation of what is special about the day to each other is really important so if it's really important that to the groom that they have a carrot cake um, then they should have a carrot cake and I suppose being on that same page at the same time is quite crucial too I know a lot of brides kind of um, swoop into the wedding planning as soon as they've got the ring on their finger where potentially some guys get engaged and think they've still got a few years up their sleeves before that all starts so I think um, yeah really having a, an understanding of you know time time frames and uh, budgets, basic budgets and things like that really helps just um, smooth out any kind of potential issues that could come up. When you're looking at wedding budgets it's really easy to go online or look in wedding magazines and they have these nice little pie graphs that show that 30% should go on catering and 30% should go on photography and things like that and I just think that they're really unrealistic. I think that it's really important that you identify the things that you want to um, invest your money in and the things that maybe you can reel back on in terms of costs. So for us for example I really really wanted to spend a lot of money on photography and videography. To me that was so important, it was more important than anything else and I would have rather walked down the aisle in a paper dress than scrimp on having bad photography and to me that was an investment in the day um, and but I mean that took a lot of discussion in terms of trying to justify I suppose the amount of money that we were spending when you compared it to how much a dress was costing or the suits were costing or a cake was costing. One of the real trends at the moment is to do the DIY wedding, so it's to um, get out there and you know design your own wedding invites, do your own flowers, make your own dress and all that kind of stuff. And that's really, really great and I think that was kind of my blue sky thinking when I got into this as well. I was thinking, oh I can do this and you know, well Caleb's away, I'll make this and I'll make that. And the reality was that just didn't happen. Um, and also the cost of things, I think DIY sounds really great but especially with dresses, I know that a lot of um, people opt to make their own dresses which is great or get somebody to make them for them. But once you start looking at the material and actually comparing it with what you can buy, I think there can be cheaper ways. For example, I bought my dress off the rack as a sample and got it altered. I think every bride's allowed a couple of bridezilla moments. Um, the fact is planning a wedding is just like planning any other kind of big event. It can be really, really stressful and brides are, are allowed to vent I suppose, I think. Um, I'm a firm believer of that. I think it's about keeping perspective though and making sure that you're not kind of a bridezilla from the outset and then just, you know, hell to deal with. One of the things that is also really on trend at the moment, and I think it's one of the biggest stumbling blocks for brides, is what I like to call the Pinterest effect, which is where basically as soon as you've got that ring on your finger, you just start liking every wedding page you can on Facebook and, and uh, starting up your Pinterest board of your dream gown and your dream bridesmaid's dresses and your dream venue and things like that. The reality is sometimes you can have too much choice. Um, back in the day you used to just get a, a stack of wedding magazines and that was kind of it that you got to choose from and now it's just endless and there's this kind of weird one-upmanship that comes around it as well where you'll decide that you want to give everyone um, you know, a gift of some chocolate or something and then suddenly you can see you can get personalised M&Ms and everything just snowballs on and I think it's really important that women especially um, step back from that effect because it's really overwhelming and uh, it really takes away from what the day is supposed to be about. Even though men traditionally don't necessarily have a dream wedding day 
they may still have some quite strong opinions about certain parts of it and uh, it's important that they at least get a little chance to hear them. I think it's really important that couples um, encompass who they are in a wedding ceremony because um, there's nothing worse than going to a wedding and uh, two people standing up looking really awkward in their clothes that they're wearing and everybody watching them and saying some vows that maybe don't match up with what you know their personal beliefs are. If they're a couple that are mad about motocross riding and they do it all day every day, why not encompass part of that into their, their day? If they are Star Wars freaks, why not have some Star Wars reflection in their day? I'm not talking about going crazy or kind of taking the piss out of the situation, but it's really important, I think, to reflect who you are as a couple and why you're together as a couple and what your togetherness as a couple means for the people that are there to see you on your wedding day.